Welcome to the GCN Tech Clinic, where we aim to answer your bike and tech-related questions. As ever, you can submit your questions using social media and the comment section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech. We get a lot of questions from you guys, which is great, so we aim to answer as many of them as possible. But if we don't answer your question this week, I'm sorry, but just persevere, keep them coming, and hopefully we'll get around to it eventually. Now, first up this week, we have a question from Radi Raditya Irfan. I think I got that right. Uh, it says, I love to bring ride food, um, especially bananas, but any tips for peeling a banana using one hand? They're really useful when riding. Um, I'm guessing you're quite sort of a beginner. I mean, I've never really had a problem with it. My top tip would be use a ripe banana as they peel much more easily. <laughs> also, maybe like, I think my technique, I've never really thought about it, but I think I'd probably like, you know, use the little bit at the top to kind of like bite that and get it going. And then it just kind of like, maybe use your mouth a bit on your hand. I don't know, maybe try that. But yeah, bananas are great ride food. So definitely something worth eating, but ripe ones. You'll absorb ripe ones quicker as well. Uh, next question is from Fabricio Orego, who says, Hi, Oli and Alex. I want to know if changing my Ultegra 6700 to the newer version of 105, which is 11 speed, would be an upgrade more than a downgrade. Thanks. Um, so yes, you are dropping a tier in group set, but in that kind of six, seven years since that particular Ultegra was around, 105 has you know, really, really come on to the point where now, because of the trickle-down tech, upgrading to that 105 would be that. It would be an upgrade. Um, it's a more sophisticated group set now. So don't think of it as a downgrade. Plus, getting newer components on your bike that are you know, nice and smooth will breathe new lease of life into your bike as well, and the shifting will be nicer, the brakes are a bit better. Yeah, definite upgrade. Next question is from uh, Heinter Linden, who says, Hi GCN, could you be so kind as to level the TV screen in the background? Sincerely, everyone. That comment's got about 60 likes on it. Oh, sorry about that. How's that? Is that good? <sighs> Hopefully that's, that's better now. Um, next question is from Jason Lendrum, who says, Hi GCN, I bought a new bike and it has a dork disc fitted. Should I leave it on or should I take it off? Thank you. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term dork disc, he's referring to the spoke protector, which you get on quite a lot of new bikes. It's a clear plastic disc, sometimes it's a black plastic disc, that's attached behind the cassette in between where the spokes are. And the idea is that it, yeah, it protects your spokes, it stops if the chain comes off the back of the cassette, it doesn't mash into your spokes. The thing is, is it's actually like redundant, they're not really needed. They're kind of put on as, I think, a health and safety measure when bikes are shipped. But yeah, if you want your bike to look good, I'd, I'd take it off. They're, they're not required, they're not necessary, and that's why you won't ever see them on one of my bikes or, I don't know, any sort of pro bike or any experienced cyclist bike. Um, and while on the subject, of, they just look a bit rubbish, but while on the subject of that, in a similar vein, also got a question from Cricky, which ties into this, which says, is there an advantage of removing reflectors on the wheels? My pro buddies uh, always seem to, you know, say to, I should remove the reflectors on my wheels when I get a new bike, but I always thought it was best to leave it there and to serve its safety purpose. Well, if you're riding a lot in the dark, then yeah, reflectors can certainly be useful at increasing your visibility. And if you feel more comfortable leaving your reflectors on, same with your dork disc, really. Then if you want to, you, you can leave them on. There's no, there's no rules uh, that say that you really have to take them off. Personally, I would remove them because I think they detract from the aesthetic of the bike. And yeah, my, my ego gets in the way and I think that they don't look pro and I want to look as pro as possible, but um, yeah, each their own. There are no rules. Ignore your friends. If you want to keep them on to be safer, you can do so. It's fine. Next, we have a question from Harmit Mayer, who says, I'm asking, am I asking for trouble if I combine an 1125 cassette with a GRX 815 DI2 rear derailleur? For some reason, Shimano says that with this particular rear derailleur, I cannot go smaller than 30 teeth on the biggest cog on the cassette. So 1125, for those who are unfamiliar, is a nice cassette. It's kind of like a bit of a time-trialing cassette now, but 
originally was quite common a few years ago. Um, it's close ratioed. But the length of the cage on the rear derailleur and also the arm of the rear derailleur that, that moves against the spring is specifically designed to cope with different gear ratios. And Shimano are often quite conservative in their recommendations. So you can, you can normally operate outside of what they suggest, which in this case is 30 tooth. But although I believe that will work, I've not tried it myself, but I'm pretty confident it will work, it is best to stick with what's recommended. And if you're using DI2, the beauty of DI2 is that those rear derailleurs are so easy to just swap in and out. It is you know, literally a case of plug and play, and it's very easy to adjust the limit screws. That's the main screw you'd have to adjust in that instance is probably the B limit screw um, to adjust the, the length of it. But um, as that adjusts the length of the top jockey wheel relative to the cassette. But yes, um, yeah, best to stick with what's, what's recommended, I'd say, in, in that instance. But yeah, it's up to you. Uh, Fushi says, why aren't there more pro riders or more riders putting bottle cages uh, on their saddle? like it's common in triathlon. Uh, apparently there are aero gains to be made. Well, yes, while it, this is something that is quite common in triathlon. For those who are unfamiliar, triathlon riders, you know, riding in Ironman events and stuff, they're on their TT bikes, and on the back of their saddle, you can get these kind of uh, bottle cages that lock in the back of the saddle. And yes, the idea is that they are, um, it's kind of a nice aerodynamic out the way place to put your bottles, right? Now, the reason why they're using them there is because they still have uh, water and bottles mounted on the, on the bike itself. Usually they have one in the tri bars that they can just put down with a straw. And often modern TT bikes now have hydration systems built in like the, the specialized Shiv triathlon bike. And that's because in a lot of these Ironman events, they need a huge amount of fuel on board the bike, a lot, of, a lot of hydration, and they don't want to be wasting time by stopping. So they want to aim to carry all the bike split fuel in one go on the bike. And that means that in order to meet that amount of fuel, they have it everywhere, including on the saddle. But having, you know, bottles on the back of your saddle is not the easiest place to reach for a bottle. The easiest place to reach for a bottle on most road bikes is certainly where they are in, inside the frame. And if you know riders were to use that more often, especially in bunch racing scenarios, it's going to be a bit kind of sketchy trying to reach behind you. You're more likely to probably drop the bottle because you can't look at it while you're grabbing it, and you know that could cause problems. You know we saw Garrett Thomas run over a bottle, didn't we? So you don't want to be dropping a bottle in a bunch, and so that's probably the reason having them in the frame is, is a better place. But for people who are riding, you know, extreme endurance events, you know, if you're riding in the desert or if you're doing a time trial around, you know, 100 miles or longer, it is common for non-triathletes to use uh, additional water bottles and hydration systems on their bikes as well, um, especially, you know, in extreme, you know, endurance things. So, yeah, that's uh, hopefully that answers that for you. Last question this week is from Harry McGurk, who says, hey lads, I'm wondering how often you should wash and clean your bike, once every couple of weeks or after every single ride? And what are the downfalls if you're leaving it dirty? Well, I would say you should, this is very topical right now if you live in the Northern Hemisphere, particularly in the UK, as in winter, the roads and lanes are filthy. When I go out for a ride, it, you know, my bike comes back absolutely caked in crap right now. Um, and I'm, I'm consequently cleaning it after every single ride, you know, but sometimes you can go out even in winter and the roads are clear and you, your bike comes back and it's not dirty, in which case, yeah, you probably don't, probably don't need to clean it. So the, the quick answer to your question is, I would say I'd recommend cleaning your bike whenever it gets dirty, whenever it needs a clean, clean it, you know, and it's a good idea to clean it as soon as you get back from your ride. We've got videos that show how quickly you can do this um, and if you can do it in every scenario. So even if you live in a flat, we've done a video where if you don't have a garden, you can, you can quickly give it a rinse if you need to in the, in the bath. Um, but you know, it's something that can be done very quickly and even a quick clean will be beneficial over just leaving it dirty. If you leave it dirty, certain parts are likely to rust especially if there's been salt added to the roads, that just eats away at bearings and, and metal components. Um, and also just leaving dirt on the bike 
creates sort of a grinding paste in your drivetrain, which causes accelerated wear there. And on braking surfaces as well, it's gonna accelerate the wear on your wheels if you're using rim brakes and on your discs and pads if you're using um, disc brakes. And so in the long run, you save money by cleaning your bike uh, rather than leaving it dirty. And as a, you know, a Yorkshireman, I'm all for that. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. And uh, yeah, clean it when you need to. Now that's all we've got time for this week. Sorry if I haven't had time to uh, answer your question this week, but keep them coming and hopefully we'll get round to it. And also if you're after a bargain, which you know, as a Yorkshireman, I always am, then check out the GCN shop because it's Black Friday uh, is, you know, is rapidly approaching and we've got some amazing bargains, including I'm told this sweatshirt is going to be heavily discounted, which is great because it's one of my favorite ones of all the different ones we do. So uh, head over, check it out. We've got loads of stuff discounted. Grab yourself a bargain and I'll see you in the next one. All right. <laughs>